I am Marquita Sharon, Blog Squad correspondent for The Easy Street Show, 93.9 WKYS. And we are at the sound check for Mr. Eric Roberson. Okay, he is so brilliant, so talented. It is such an honor to actually be experiencing this. Now, this is before the show, and he already is sounding amazing. The band sounds amazing. His thought process into everything that he's doing is amazing. So I cannot wait for you to see the show, for you to experience him personal with this interview, and I'm going to check back in later. Marquita Sharon for you. I am Marquita Sharon, Blog Squad, correspondent of the Easy Street Show, 93.9 WKYS. And I am sitting here with the brilliant, amazingly talented Eric Roberson. But I mean it, though. Walk up, reached over and noticed that she's not here If last night was a dream, then life Thank you very much. I appreciate the introduction. I mean, we, we rehearse a lot band-wise, but at the same time, we try to keep it very loose and have a good time um, and be prepared for those left and right turns. And that's what's going to make the show different. This is the second night here, and uh, though a lot of the stuff will be the same as it was last night, but um, there will be some changes. Now, we don't even know what those changes will be because we're reacting. We did a spoken word poem last night, just oh, out oh, the blue. Oh, oh, I was in oh, the was building, the okay, yeah, that and was that was the highlight yeah. That was the highlight of my night. Well, there we go. There, we, Coconuts. There, there, there may be a, hey man, <laughs> coconuts. That was hilarious. And you, the the song that you did right before when you used what what was the words? Uh, hypnotic. Hypnotic. Uh, unicorn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was that? Uh, African word. Fufuzela. Yeah. Fufuzela. <laughs> And, that was uh, yeah, it was nice. We, uh, skinny dipping, I think it was. Skinny dipping. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a few words. We you know, but that's the thing. We we love to kind of make songs up and just allow the crowd in the show to progress and i mean but that's i don't know if i go i mean we we pray we'd love to take a shower before a show brush our teeth you know what i mean get it right <laughs> and um and then really like i said the warm-ups and stuff like that but most of the rest of it is just kind of just chilling and having a good time and getting ready for the show which if we can get on stage right now i think the band would want to do it just you know because we love performing so and hopefully that oh, that's that you can see that when it comes to you doing the freestyle, from to me that is just absolutely amazing. I cannot understand how you're able to be silly, you know, because you're entertaining to us, yeah. as well as you're focused and you remember all the words. Like I, I you remember the words, the words but, all the ones that they call out. Well, like, we did the poem because <laughs> right, I forgot coconut. Right, you right, know what? Right. I mean, I usually try to keep it, you know, to four to five words. Mm -hmm. Um, but sometimes it becomes more words, and more words are the more I'm, chance I'm going to forget it. But, I mean, really, the, the whole thing is really uh, something we call process over product. I'll honestly tell you that if at any point, if I stop to think whether this song is going to work or not, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. It's just about being. And I'm just as surprised as the discoveries as anybody else. We're literally making it all up right then and there. And I've learned to allow it, allow it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's already... It's already destined. Everything's already done. And if we if we approach things, even at this interview, that the interview is done and it's going to be successful and it's going to do what it's going to do, we just have to carry through that journey and not really worry about the product side of it, you know. Or shall I say, you have, you know, um, a great cameraman. And he's handling that part. So you trust in that and you do your part. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's kind of like I don't really have to worry more about what the keyboard or drums are doing. We all have the like-minded approach to it, and it comes together. Now we got way too involved Any other just to push it along And the problems 
so sadly that I have a long to Real good brother, she didn't tend to Make me her lover, this is said after Let's say I had her, let's say I'd rather Be the one that matters Get it sounded bad at me, I should just chill And just let this little story and feel But you so. know, even if it's not right you know, rock on and rock through it. I tell my band all the time, I say, I'd rather you be uh, mistakenly confident, like confident with a like, mistake, ah, than be correct and timid. You know what I mean? I'd rather just, I'll take that any day, you know? So, and I don't mind him taking chances. So we, we'll make mistakes. I'll forget some words. I'm sure I did last, last night. Um, we might miss a chord here or there, but it, because we leave room to try things. And every once in a while they go, oh man, I'm like, oh, uh, you know, oh man, I missed that, but it's cool. I said, oh, that was crazy. You know, it's like, we're going through that while we're, while we're performing. Most people probably don't know that stuff. It's more us, but um, you know, it's about discovery. Okay, right. so I want to definitely ask you about the box. Yes. Um, first, when I first saw the, the first picture, I was just like, okay, he really, this, is, this was a really good idea. Thank you. This was a really good idea. What is the message behind this, the box? You know, the album cover, you know, in general, and these covers really tell the story of the sound. It's like, you know, we're, we're in a tailored suit, top hat, lapel pin, just really clean, classic maturity. But yeah, we got a boom box next to us, you know, because at the end of the day, we hip hop kids. You know, I grew up listening to that, that thug side of other things too, that rock and roll, that house music, that stuff. So it's the box is because it's a boom box mentality that we approach mature music with. So it was the marriage of Tribe Called Quest drums, um, Outkast drums, uh, LL Cool J drums with Sade chords, uh, Herbie Hancock chords, um, you know, and with Earth, Wind & Fire and Ohio player horn arrangements over top. And the, the the vocal arrangements of of my heroes, the Stevie Wonders and the and the um, the uh, Otis Reddings and stuff like that. So we we really try to pay homage to that marriage. Um, and I was really I'm, I can't tell you how happy I am with uh, with this album. I'm probably as content with the sound, the finished product of this record as I am over all my other records. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was talking to your father yesterday, he brought up that you wrote a poem. Oh, Lord. Back in grade school. He can't help it. And can you recite that? Do you remember it? Or is he the one that remembers it? <laughs> I, I only remember it because he reminds me all the time, but it was called loneliness. Mm -hmm. Even even back then, I was writing very yeah. sad. I was always good at writing sad. a sad. I don't consider that sad. I loneliness that is like an empty room or a flower that will never bloom or a balloon that's about to bust or a pizza without its crust was mine. Home. I have no. I remember I was sitting in Denny's and I wrote it on a napkin. I know that. I know that. I remember that. He said and, you were in grade school. Denny's was a big deal back in the day. You know, <laughs> I used to get a chicken leg and some pancakes. That was my first. It wasn't chicken. My 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 growth period to chicken and waffles. You know, the chicken leg and pancakes and hotcakes. But um, yeah, I wrote. I remember. I remember I was sitting there with him and I wrote it on a on a napkin. Uh, um, but that's, you know, I, I have no idea. I'm probably, as fast as I was learning how to write a sentence, I was probably writing poetry. I was always in love with poetry and, and the combinations of words. And I was read, I was winning like little poetry contests in, you know, elementary school and junior high already just cause wow. I was just always into writing, you know? I remember even, I remember the first, the first rap I tried to write. Um, it was the night before Christmas and all through the house, everybody was chilling including the mouse. I was laying on my bed, watching my Sony, eating some chicken and eating rice aroni. I remember like, like I mean, I was probably fourth grade, third or fourth grade, I was really trying to write my first rap. And I think, you know, what we had to realize is these kids that are growing up wanting to be rappers, they're poets at the end of the day, you know? And I think they're only, they're approaching maybe a different concept, but they're approaching it the same way um, uh, Shakespeare or, or Maya Angelou or, or James Baldwin uh, all approached putting words to a paper with creativity. Now, mind you, it might be different subject matter, but if we can channel it to a different thing, um, what I will tell you is that part of the brain is really, really working in these kids. Now, what we, we have to do is we have to realize that maybe turn a little bit so they're not writing about shooting somebody in the face or, or smutting on a stripper's butt or something okay. like that, you know what I mean? And yes. try to channel it to where we can get to, to something a little more perspective. And as well as also even getting back to the early parts of soul music in general, not just hip hop, but soul music, where if something happened, we'd write about it. I'm case point of this Mike Brown shooting, 
that just happened with the police, there has not been one, there probably would not, let me not say that, there probably would not be a song by a major artist by it. You know what I mean? As well as the Trayvon Mar um, Martin stuff that wasn't really, back in the day, the civil, right, civil rights music had soul music as a soundtrack. Um, you know, slavery, all through the entire slavery, they, it was strengthened through the, the resolve to survive it was strengthened through music, you know, and not on records, obviously, but the, they sang on those cotton fields and in those uh, plantations to get through. I mean, that's where the blues was created. So um, we have to dial people back because these kids are creating more than ever, probably, you know, um, but we're just not centered to getting a pulse of where we're at right now, you know. She put a mark on me. And you, and yeah, you use yeah. Different icons for yeah. people that you really, you know, love yeah. and appreciate. And I thought that was very. I thought it was like, that is so clever. Well, I have an amazing team. You met, I believe, Sweet Locks and uh, Anshia yesterday, and there's uh, so much more. Some other people as well, Jarrell and uh, Cool J and Demo's background vocals. He's also uh, part of the team as well. And and you know. Those meetings are just like band rehearsals in some form of fashion, you know, creativity. Um, I don't know which one of the staff members came up with the idea of, um, of doing the, the, the iconic pictures, but, um, but it was a brilliant idea and I thought it was great to go with that. Um, and also, like I said, to, to, to pay homage to people who have had a, a mark on us, you know, an effect on, on us. So any way we can turn that around, we're down to do it. And, it, and, it, and really art at the end of the day is to evoke conversation. And that's what I think those pictures do, you know, is that, um, somebody, oh, man, I love Felicia Rashad. Oh, I can't believe I grabbed you. Oh, Shaka Khan, man, you know, and that's what makes it art, you know. I love the fact that you believe in yourself so much and your confidence is there. And it's, there's never a conceit factor in it at all whatsoever. No, you know, you it's know? what we call a chug life, conceitedly humble under God. You know what I'm saying? So it's like chug life. Whenever you hear that, you know, uh, uh, it's patent. You can just send a check to me. Say so, no, but um, uh, me and my boys, uh, United Tenor guys, we joke about that whole chug life. Um, but you know, I, I do believe in the process. I believe in the creativity. And at the same time, I'm, I am um, more than willing to fail in front of people. The freestyle could easily not work, or an album could easily not sell. You won't get through your journey without failure of some sort, you know, things not necessarily working out as much as you can. So I, I don't always know if it's um, confidence. I'm just as, you know, I have my insecurities as much as anybody else, but a lot of it is just going that I trust. The, I ran into enough brick walls in my life and then through this 20 years of business to know that I survived it, I was able to get up and dust myself off and, and that brick wall taught me a lesson going forward. So that doesn't mean I need to be timid on my journey. You know, that means I need to go back to full speed. If I run into a brick wall again, I have the confidence that I survived it last time. We'll do it again. So um, it's more about that. I don't. I don't lose sleep over failures and mistakes too much. More than confidence that we'll just be perfect. You know what I mean? It's a little bit more of that. I think that right there is the best advice that you can give to any artist, anybody. You know, anybody trying to pursue anything. That. <laughs> was okay he's been deep this whole time just let me let you know like i am so enlightened i am so inspired and i'm definitely intrigued always fan first and you know please please get this album get all of the other albums now right uh, this would be the 10th one so nine. other nine yeah. mm -hmm. yes support him seriously because eventually you're not going to be able to touch him and you know come i think that you'll always be an intimate interactive type of artist though yeah, yeah. It's, that's what it's about mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you so very much. I am honored to have been able to sit here with you. And this is before his show, by the way, okay? He could be tired and just, you know. He's about to blaze on the show, too. Don't even let it. Don't let it go by yet. Like, he's about to blaze. <laughs> so thank you very much again, Mr. Eric Roberson. Thank you. And if you are, um, he's, what is it? Um, This was released on? August 12th. Yes, August 12th, and it's available on all of the sites oh, that you can go. And t-shirts, too. That's what I was asking about oh, yeah, yesterday. Well, if you go to ericrobersonmusic.com, you can definitely get the t-shirt. R-O-B-E-R-S-O-N.com, music.com, and you can, uh, you can definitely get the t-shirts there. Okay, I'll be getting mine, definitely. <laughs> all right, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Thank you.